By mid-January of 1892, a funeral procession passed through downtown Knoxville that included nearly all University of Tennessee faculty members, the university's board of trustees, many of its students, a battalion of cadets in uniform, and several of Knoxville's finest individuals. It must have been an incredible sight to see so many of Knoxville's most notable individuals come out to honor one of its most beloved contributors. But who was the gentleman behind such honors? I stand at Old Gray Cemetery, resting place of Thomas William Humes. Thomas William Humes was one of Knoxville's most notable 19th century individuals, and by the time he had passed, Humes had served as church rector, civil war leader, published author, philanthropist, university president, and humanitarian. Join us as we chronicle the life of Thomas William Hughes. From the time he was born until the time he passed, Thomas Hume spent his whole life in Knoxville in East Tennessee. The building that I stand at today is the Bijou Theater. By the time he was born, this was a family home for Thomas Humes and his mother. In the early 19th century, Thomas and Margaret Russell Cohen Humes immigrated to Knoxville, Tennessee from Armagh, Ireland. Humes' father began constructing a hotel to be named the Thomas Humes House in 1815. That same year, Thomas William was born in downtown Knoxville. However, his father passed away just a year later in 1816. Thomas William and his mother Margaret oversaw the building's completion, continued living in the hotel, and began renting it out. It became one of the prettiest buildings in Knoxville and became the city's premier hotel. It later would become the Lamar House Hotel and would serve as a key gathering place for Knoxville's most prominent individuals. Today it stands as the historic Knoxville Bijou Theater. Growing up, Thomas William became familiarized with faith and demonstrated great potential as a bright young man. By the age of 15, Humes graduated from East Tennessee College with his AB degree in 1830. Two years later, Humes earned his master's degree. He then went to the Princeton Theological Seminary, intending to become a Presbyterian minister. However, he opted against this after deciding he could not take the Westminster Confession of Faith. He later returned to Knoxville in the late 1830s. After leaving Princeton Seminary School, Humes went through a period of trying to determine what he wanted to do. He served as editor for Knoxville Times and Knoxville Register until landing right here at St. John's Episcopal Church, where he would serve and lead the church for over 25 years. In 1840, Humes was nominated by fellow Whig Party members to become a legislative representative. But due to overconfidence and a lack of preparation, Humes narrowly lost the election by only a few votes. Because of this, he refocused on being a Christian minister. This led him to apply for order from Reverend James Oti, and he became deacon of the Protestant Episcopal Church in Columbia, Tennessee in 1845. In August of 1845, he was ordained as a presbyter at the Episcopal Church in downtown Knoxville, and by 1846, Humes became rector of St. John's Church. He served as rector until 1861, when because of his union sympathies, he was forced to resign his position. However, in 1863, when the union captured Knoxville, General Burnside specially requested that Humes return to his rectorship. Humes remained as rector until 1869. As the Civil War and the debate over slavery raged on in America, Thomas William Humes was particularly outspoken about his disapproval of slavery. When Confederacy took over Knoxville, he declared it a reign of terror, disagreeing with the way that they ran the city. But it wasn't until 1863, at forts like this one at Fort Dickerson, when Unionists took back the city, that Humes was able to resume his place, standing out against slavery and leading the city of Knoxville. As the debate over slavery raged on in America, Humes was particularly outspoken about his disapproval of the subject. Humes often lamented on the injustices of slavery and publicly encouraged Knoxvillians to stand against it. Using the precedent of original Tennesseans as justification, Humes often provided testimonies like the following to discourage the institution's existence. The Mountaineers, strictly speaking, felt no concern about the institution of slavery itself and knew but little of it. Generally, they looked upon slavery as something foreign to their social life, but they had no impurity, philanthropic impulses to contend against it. They would have been displeased at its coming near their homes. At the same time, they were satisfied to let the men of the South keep serfs at pleasure, but they counted no business of theirs to help in the work. However, this didn't sit well with much of Knoxville. 
one Confederate sympathizer cried out against Humes, declaring him the grandest old rascal that ever was. As the Civil War came to an end, Thomas Humes was approved under unanimous decision by the Board of Trustees to become the new president of East Tennessee University. Immediately, he set his sights on reviving and restoring the war-torn university. By 1870, Hume secured federal funding of $18,500 to help improve the deteriorated campus. He ordered the removal of breastworks, temporary fortifications that were used during the war, from the campus. He also commissioned the horticulturists to revamp the appearance of the hill. The daisies that were planted on the hill during this time were the ones that would ultimately inspire the bright orange university that it is now recognizable for. Additionally, Humes made possible necessary repairs to campus buildings. Within years, all signs of war were erased from the university. Humes also expanded the reach of the university. First, he made possible the establishment of an agriculture experiment station. Next, he added medical and dental stations in Nashville. Then, in 1869, the university was approved under the Morrill Act to become a land-grant university. Through the act, the university was able to add agriculture, engineering, and military science schools. In doing so, Humes also increased the size of the university as he hired new faculty members and boosted enrollment figures. Under Humes, the graduating class grew from 4 to 300. Humes' most memorable action as president occurred in 1879 when he received legislative approval to change the name of the college from East Tennessee University to the University of Tennessee. Showing that the college was one for students from all corners of the state of Tennessee, this would be the final name change to the university. In all, Humes acquired nearly $400,500 in funding to restore the university, rebuilt and rebranded the Warntorn College, and added several schools and departments to grow it. The college experienced much expansion and improvement thanks to his work and will forever be indebted to Humes for his success as president. To recognize him, UT built and named a dorm in his honor. Humes Hall stands as a testament to his contributions. However, Hume's time with the University of Tennessee would come to an end in 1883 when he was at odds with the university's board of trustees. Hume's held a far more progressive stance on integration of the university than others did within the state. That year, he resigned due to the disagreement. Hume's dream of students of all color being educated at a world-class level alongside each other would not ultimately come true until 1961. Outside of his Involved working life, Thomas Humes also had a complexly knit personal life. He was an involved family man and a dedicated community figure. And it was places like this at Lawson McGee Library where Thomas Humes would spend the remainder of his life after his time as UT president. In his faith, Humes was originally of Catholic nature, but he believed it was more important to be a Christian than to be part of a certain denomination. This belief led him to travel to several churches of differing denominations in his available time. He was first married in Knoxville on December 4, 1834, to Cornelia Williams of Granger County, Tennessee. Thomas and Cornelia gave birth to three children, of whom one, Andrew Russell Humes, survived. His first daughter, Cornelia, died in 1847 at the age of 30. Two years later, on April 12, 1849, Humes married his second wife, Anna B. Williams. Anna was a successful lawyer and a member of the Connecticut Legislature. Thomas and Anna had five children, but only two daughters survived birth. Humes was also extremely active in East Tennessee affairs. He was a devout Republican with the overarching goal of bettering Knoxville and providing opportunities to those who are in need. In 1864, Humes became the chairman of the East Tennessee Relief Association. As chairman, Humes focused on helping unionists left needy after the war. Under his leadership, the association distributed $150,000 among those who suffered from the war. Humes also co-founded the St. John's Orphanage, which further supported Knoxville's poor. Humes was very passionate about education for all people. He taught free African Americans under his own roof. Through such efforts, Humes educated Laura Scott, Tennessee's first African American teacher. He also acquired Peabody funding for the establishment of a public school system in Knoxville. He was always a public spirited man. Upon stepping down from UT, Humes became the first librarian for Lawson McGee Library in downtown Knoxville. At the same time, he published his own book that told the story about East Tennessee's proud unionists. Entitled Loyal Mountaineers of Tennessee, his love for the region is made clear by statements such as the following. East Tennessee should be presented to the nation as a splendid example of unadulterated patriotism, granted a deep and strong love for their whole country. Upon passing on January 16, 1892, Thomas Humes was buried alongside his late wife Anna, who had passed 13 years prior in Knoxville's Old Grace Cemetery. His marker reads, I am the resurrection and the life. 
From his years growing up here in downtown Knoxville until his passing near the end of the 19th century, Thomas William Humes was a key figure in Knoxville. Humes fulfilled a major transitional figure for the city. As rector for St. John's Cathedral, Humes prepared the church for the onset of the Civil War. For the University of Tennessee, Humes transitioned the school from East Tennessee University to a statewide college for all Tennesseans as it became the University of Tennessee. And in social affairs, Humes helped advance the movement for true racial equality as he advocated for African American suffrage and the social tolerance for all peoples. Humes was an individual that never lost sight of his core values, even when he was challenged by those around him. His church, the University of Tennessee, and Knoxville will forever be thankful for his contributions in a time of instability. Thank you for joining us as we retold the remarkable story of the life of the Honorable Thomas William Humes.